Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Where's the proof of exemption? My doctor has that, and I don't need to provide that to you or anybody else. It's between me and my doctor. Okay, well, And that's point, the law. That's the law. Okay, well, at this point, you're not able to come into any stores without a mask. Well, I've been going in stores no problem except for this one without a mask. Due to COVID restrictions, it's mandatory that you have to wear a mask. Okay? That, that's bottom line. I know. Line. That's, 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 that's not that's legislative law. You show me the legislative law that requires... No, it's not. <laughs> it's actually no, it's not. $92.50. Well, you can go ahead and give me the fine, but it won't, it won't make any difference whatsoever. Okay. So uh, they said, okay, we want you to leave. So I turned around and, and I started to walk away. They asked me for identification. And I said, I didn't break any laws. I don't need to provide you with anything. And as I was walking out the door, he continued, uh, Cahill, the officer Cahill, continued to ask me for my identification. Uh, I said, no, I don't have it. And as I started across the street, he grabbed me on my, by my shoulder and kind of, you know, tried to pull me around and I, you know, pulled myself away from him. And then both of them grabbed me and tackled me to the ground. Sorry. Oh, hey guys, thanks for watching this video. However, I don't know how long you'll be able to do that. You see, Rebel News is in an emergency and I'm not exaggerating. Time is running out for us on YouTube. Could be today, could be tomorrow, could be two weeks from now, but we will be completely disappeared from YouTube and cut off from our nearly 1.5 million subscribers, which is exactly what big tech wants to cut us off from you. Can you do us a favor? We want to be able to let you know where we've gone when YouTube completely deplatforms us. Please go to afteryoutube.com. Just give us a little bit of information about you so that we can stay in touch and let you know what YouTube has done to us and of course where we've gone so that we can keep on fighting for freedom. Thanks again. Today I'm bringing you the absolutely horrible lockdown story of Wendy Kirkland from Woodstock, New Brunswick. Now Wendy who is completely medically mask exempt, was tackled by police for the crime of not wearing a mask at the local heart store. The whole thing is madness, but it gets even worse because Wendy then ended up being criminally charged with obstruction. Her story is infuriating and sad all at once. First, because it should never have happened to her at all, but it's also an example of just how far society has fallen away from common human decency during this pandemic. But don't worry, because friends, you're going to have an opportunity to make a difference for Wendy and the hundreds of other people just like her who refuse to become victims of the lockdown by helping these folks fight their lockdown tickets. And in Wendy's case, this insane criminal charge in court through Rebel News's largest civil liberties initiative to date, fightthefines.com. We're going to hear from Wendy, then we're going to discuss Wendy's case with Victoria Solomon. Victoria is our Fight the Fines legal coordinator. Victoria is a working lawyer, but she's also the extremely necessary point person who's in charge of managing the nearly 1,000 people in businesses that we are helping fight their lockdown tickets in court at no cost to them through fightthefines.com. Okay, first, let's hear Wendy's story. And I first interviewed Wendy way back in December 2020. That's just how long we've been working hard to help her. Just listen. Did you call the police? I called public safety. <laughs> wow. That's my duty. I'm sorry. I have a mask exemption, and my mother and I came into the store, and she won't let me come in. So what, what sort of exemption do you have? I don't have to provide you that information. That's between myself and my doctor. Okay, but right now, due to COVID, it's mandatory to wear a mask. That, that's yes, the law. but I'm exempt. That's also the which, law. Which I understand, yes. But okay. where's the proof of exemption? My doctor has that, and I don't need to provide that to you or anybody else. It's between me and my doctor. Okay, well, And that's point, the law. That's the law. Okay, well, at this point, you're not able to come into any stores without a mask. Well, I've been going in stores, no problem, except for this one without a mask, because they respect the...
the... I didn't go to every other... We didn't get called to every other store, right? No, because they're not going to bother harassing a, a, a person who has a disability. I, I, I'm not I'm not arguing your disability, ma'am. Not Well, I'm you not are. Aware, you are. What I'm saying is due to COVID restrictions, it's mandatory you, get, you have to wear a mask. Okay? That, that's bottom line. I know. Line. That's, 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 that's not that's, legislative law. You show me the legislative law that requires... No, it's not. It's actually no, it's not. $92.50. Well, you can go ahead and give me the fine, but it won't It won't make any difference whatsoever. Okay. That's fine. May I have your name, please, officer? Uh, Corey Porter. Sorry? Corey Porter. Well, what's your name? I'm sorry. I don't have to give you that information either. Yeah, you Cahill, do. No, actually, I don't. You do. No, I don't. Wait, I'm not no. breaking any laws. You are. But, no, but I'm you not. It, this is not a law. It's a... It's, okay. Have, it's have not you a law. The news? Have you, have you no, I don't watch the news. Okay, well, well, right now, I listen to what my lawyer law. tells me. Okay, I listen right to what my constitutional law. lawyer tells me. There's no, no, there's no, unless I'm mask exempt, which I am. Which is fine. Where's your we, exemption card? We need exemption. I don't have an exemption card. No one's ever provided me an exemption card. And when I spoke to my doctor the last time, he didn't provide one to me. Okay. Since when does it become law? Maybe he's mailed it in, in the mail. I have no idea. Okay, so... Uh, but you, can't, you can't prevent someone with a disability to not go into a store to buy groceries and things that are needed. Well, you can certainly debate that in court. That's, that's your right. This, this won't go to court. Okay, so you're being asked to leave. Come on, my dear. Come on. You've made your statement. And can I get the information, please? Nope. Yeah, she, yes, she does. Yes, she does. I need to have for my lawyer. For the lawyer. Stop. So can I get the information, please? If you're going to kick me out of the store lawyer, with police officers? Contact the store <clears throat> no, that's yeah, not. You can go online. And it'll be online. Okay, contact, fine. Thank you very much. Where do I go out? I don't think it does either, but... Oh, well, the officers told me I have to go out this door, apparently. You facilitated the fascism, you realize that? Yeah. you have your ID with you? No, I don't. I explained to her that I had a mask exemption, a medical mask exemption, and she said, well, you need to wear a mask. And I said, well, I can't wear a mask. So she got on the phone and she was speaking to um, somebody. Well, first I had asked for the information for a supervisor or a manager because I wanted to file a complaint, obviously. And when people have a complaint, who's the person that they ask for? The manager or the owner. So <laughs> I don't see how that was quite the problem, but anyway. Um, she got on the phone and she was on the phone for a few minutes and she said, okay, hold on. I'll go get that, that information for you. So she walked away and I'm still standing at the door. I didn't even really go into the store. I'm still standing at the door. And, uh, so she came back about five minutes later and she offered me the number for public health, which is not what I asked for. And I said, no, I, I want the number for your manager or your supervisor or the store owner. I like that number and a contact information, whatever. So um, uh, she walked away again and um, a few moments later, uh, another staff member that was standing nearby said, uh oh, and then she said, the town cops are here. So I, I was like, did you, did you call the police on me? And she said, no, I called public safety and obviously they're the ones that called the police. So, you know, I turn around and there's two, you know, big burly officers standing behind me and they, uh, they asked, you know, what was going on? And I said, well, my mom and I are here and, and my mom's walking with a cane. She's 76 years old. Um, I wanted to help her do her shopping, you know, carry her stuff for her so she wouldn't be burdened by that. So anyway, I said, you know, my mom and I are here and this lady won't let me into the store. And they said, well, why aren't you wearing a mask? And I said, well, I'm, I have an exemption. And they said, well, where's the proof? <laughs> I said, well, I don't need to provide that proof to you. It's actually unlawful to request that information from me. And he said, well, you need to have an exemption card. And as far as I've known for this long, there's never been exemption cards offered to anyone anywhere as, as far as I can tell. 
and I explained that I just saw my doctor in September and he agreed with the exemption and he, and I, I didn't even ask him for a note because I, I didn't think that it was legal for them to request that information because it's personal between my doctor and I. So anyway, they, they threatened to find me and, you know, they kept explaining that it's COVID and you need to wear a mask and blah, blah, blah. So I just, I, I gave up really. And, and I asked the lady for the information one more time and she refused to provide it. So uh, they said, okay, we want you to leave. So I turned around and, and I started to walk away. They asked me for identification and I said, I didn't break any laws. I don't need to provide you with anything. And as I was walking out the door, he continued, uh, Cahill, the officer Cahill, continued to ask me for my identification. Uh, I said, no, I don't have it. And as I started across the street, he grabbed me on my, by my shoulder and kind of, you know, tried to pull me around. And I, you know, pulled myself away from him. And then both of them grabbed me and tackled me to the ground. Sorry. One officer got right on top of me. And of course, I went into a a full-blown panic attack at that point. Um, they handcuffed me, they put me into the police car and shortly after uh, I saw my mother afterwards and she asked them why they were arresting me and the police officer said, well, he swung, she swung at him. And <laughs> how could you possibly swing at someone when you've got your back to them and you're walking you know, ahead of them? So anyway, I, I think that was completely unjustified what they did and the, and the fact that they said that I swung, which was is complete BS. Um, anyway, so we, we went to the, the police station. Um, while we were there, they told me that they were going to charge me with obstruction of justice. And he went upstairs to file the paperwork. He came back down. I refused to sign it. I, I refused everything basically. And uh, they let me, they released me shortly after. Um, because of that experience, I've got an injury to my elbow. We're not sure if there's a, a fracture yet because I haven't been in to get an x-ray, um, but I was completely covered in bruises. Um, I haven't slept very well since then. Uh, very traumatizing to go through that when you're already suffering from condition. Uh, PTSD is, is my condition, but what they did was very similar to what happened to me a few years back, which is why I ended up having the panic attack. No, it, for me, it's just shocking that it, a normal trip to the store with your mom, you're medically exempt, your, mo your mom is elderly, and this ends with you, it looks like you're face down on the pavement, a cop's got his knee in your back. The other one's holding down the top of your body. Um, yeah, the, the officer Porter was directly, he had all his body weight on my back and legs. Like he, he's not even touching the ground. He was completely on top of me. I couldn't breathe, I was screaming. Um, I, it's, it's a little bit blurry because you kinda, it's like you kinda go into this, I don't know, it's, it's just like, it, it's, I don't know how to describe it really. It just, you kind of go into a, a fuzz or like a, but anyway, that's, that's what happened. And I, I don't remember everything that happened while I was pinned down. Um, but I do remember the drive and I do remember being at the, at the police station. And of course I remember everything before that, but while I was pinned, I, I don't really, I mean, I, I was in hysterics basically. And that's what happens when, when you have uh, a panic attack. And the thing was, is, you know, up until I, I, I went through a year of therapy to try to, to get past the event that actually is causing the PTSD today. And now I have to get, go back in and do it all over again because of this. I see this and it's absolutely outrageous. And your story, you know, you're very lucky that there's a photograph of what happened to you, that that photograph of you being pinned on the ground by two cops because you're medically exempt from wearing a mask and nobody knows what the rules are. Nobody, you know, they're so happy to enforce these rules, but they don't realize what the exemptions are. Um, that well, there's, there's, there's two ahead. parts to the law. You know, there's the, you must wear a mask. 
except for those who have a medical condition which makes you exempt. And they're only enforcing that one part of the law and, and completely ignoring the other. You know, so I, I'm what you would call asymptomatic. I'm perfectly healthy. Um, I take very special careful in my business when people come in. Um, I, you know, I, I don't wear a mask. They don't give me any issues and I don't give anybody issues when they're not wearing a mask as well. But as a business owner, I know what I'm allowed to ask for and what I'm not allowed to ask for. And, and asking for them to wear a mask when they're exempt is, is against the law. So I just, I don't hassle anybody. And up until this point, I hadn't really had any issues. You know, people respect that I was exempt and they, that was the end of most of those conversations. You know, I'm sorry, I'm exempt. And I usually just keep on walking. But in this particular case, um, you know, I, I stopped at the door and, and, I, and that's where I stayed until, but I, I, I'm, I'm really upset with the, the, um, the employee because she made me wait. Like she made me believe that she was going to get the information for her supervisor. And instead of doing that, it's like, it's almost like entrapment. I mean, she, she left me waiting so that the police could come. She didn't, she didn't leave me waiting for the information. She left me waiting so the police would come. And that I think is completely unjustified, especially when I said right from the beginning, I'm exempt. Now, have you heard anything from, uh, I think it was the Hart store that you were at or the Carlton Mall? Have they reached out to you at all? Nothing. No. Nothing. And you have a court date now. You, you're you charged criminally with obstructing um, and you have to appear in court May 2021. Yeah. This is absolutely astounding that this escalated to this point. I know. I know. And I do, I, I sent you the video um, yeah. of me with the police. So, I mean, you, you can see that I was perfectly calm and, you know, trying to explain to them. And, and uh, I mean, it just in one end of the other, you know, at one point I, I felt like saying, are you thick? Like, this is an exemption. You, you can't demand, I prove that I'm exempt. That's, it's against the law. So anyway, yeah, um, they, I, I feel like they, they treated me like a criminal. You know, I, I went in there, they, they treated me as if I walked in there with a gun and held the place up and stole their money. That's, that's, that's what you do to a criminal not to someone who's never been in trouble with the law ever. You know, I'm, I'm gonna be 48 in a couple of weeks and uh, I've been a law abiding citizen, you know, a couple of traffic violations here or there. <laughs> I mean, everybody has, I'm sure at some point, but um, yeah, completely unjustified and uh, wrong. It was just wrong that they did that. And my poor mother, I mean, she's traumatized too, I mean, she was bawling her eyes out and she had asked them when they had me pinned on the ground, she asked them why they are arresting me. And, and that's what they said. So, I mean, how he could possibly think I swung when I'm, you know, facing a completely different direction is beyond me. But I think they just, I, I believe that they, they were upset because I stood up against them and they did what they did because they had the power to do so. You can hear how traumatized Wendy is by all of this. She needs our help. Thankfully, we've got our Fight the Fines legal coordinator, Victoria Solomon, organizing a team to assist Wendy. Here's Victoria with an update to Wendy's case. In Wendy's case, it looks like she was charged with obstruction of justice for failing to identify herself to the police officers. And I see so many of these cases where people have legitimate medical exemptions and they're ticketed. And not only are they ticketed, they're also charged with various criminal offenses. And Wendy is one of those people. So we hired a criminal lawyer and now Wendy has a whole legal team behind her. They're going to explore all possible defenses to this criminal charge. They're going to explore whether her charter rights were violated. They're going to look at all leg applicable legislation on the municipal, provincial and federal level. And they're going to make sure that her experiences at court is legitimate and fair. Now, that sounds far more expensive than our normal fight the fines work. It sounds like there's a lot of lawyers involved 
and a lot of heavy lifting, specifically, I guess, because this is a criminal case. Right. Yes, it is. Yes. So there is a lot more required, and uh, we have uh, an excellent lawyer who is handling this matter, and he's not working alone. He has a whole legal team of paralegals and administrative staff that are working on this case, and they're going to make sure that Wendy has the best defense available. Victoria's got a huge job keeping track of all of this, but she's incredibly competent and she's got such a heart for the work of helping people. Victoria is doing a great job fighting for the little guy during this pandemic. Now, I should let you know that I did actually reach out to that heart store for their side of the story and I wanted some comment from them. However, they never got back to me and that was months ago. Really though, at the end of the day, this is all going to shake out in a court of law and we at Rebel News are going to make that happen. But as with everything we do around here, we can't do it without your help. If you'd like to donate today to offset the cost to help Wendy Kirkland and the nearly 1,000 other people and businesses being managed by that really competent, caring lawyer, Victoria Solomon, please go to fightthefines.com and pitch in some financial support. And I should tell you, we have some really good news about Fight the Fines. If you do donate at fightthefines.com to help people fight their lockdown tickets in court, your donation now qualifies for a charitable tax credit through a registered Canadian charity, the Democracy Fund. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. To help us help the nearly 1,000 Canadians and businesses that we are assisting to fight their lockdown tickets in court, you can donate today at fightthefines.com and your donation now qualifies for a charitable tax credit through the Democracy Fund. That's fightthefines.com.